record. Hello, everyone. This is Heading Tian. Today's lesson, we will learn about the chapter 11.4, Fundamentals of Probabilities. Here, we will learn some definitions. Uh, the compute the theoretical probability. Any occurrence, let me use a pen. Okay, from here. Any occurrence of, for which the outcome is uncertain is called an experiment. Uh, that means when you toss a coin, you don't know the result. Maybe it's a tail, maybe it's a head. It's not a certain. So that's an experiment. Or like you, uh, we to toss a coin, oh, we roll a dice, you don't know which number will be shown on the top. So that is also an experiment. Uh, the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment is the sample space of an experiment denoted by S, sample space. The sample space for the coin to uh, tossing experiment is S equals uh, the set head and tail. Uh, so the all possible outcome when you uh, toss, the ta uh, toss a coin should be uh, head or a tail. So these two are all possible outcomes. So the sample space should include all of this possible outcomes. So if you roll a dice, the sample space should be one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have six uh, possible outcomes. Uh, next one, an event denoted by E is a subset of a, a sample space. For example, the subset E equals uh, tail, that means tail, uh, tails up, is the event of landing tail when a coin is tossed. Next definition is computing theoretical probability. If an event E has the NE, NE means the number of uh, the outcome in event E. Equal likely outcomes and its sample space S has NS. That is the total number of possible outcomes. Uh, equal likely, equally likely outcome, the theoretical probability of event E denoted by PE. So here is the formula of PE. Let's use the example to explain the meaning of the formula. In the example one, uh, this is the event of landing tails up. So E, the event E equals uh, the set T is the tails up. But in the sample space X is the set had, uh, oh, sorry, had tail. So the number of E, N, E, is only one element in the set equals one. Uh, we learned this in chapter uh, 2.1. We call this car a cardinal number of the set E, which is one. And the cardinal number N, S is an, how many elements in the uh, sample space? which is two. So the probability of a coin landing tails up is one over two. Let's move on to next question, uh, example. Um, example two, the sample space of dice rolling. The sample space uh, we I mentioned about is could be one, two, three, four, five, six. I list all the possible outcomes here. And uh, the cardinal number or the number of the element in the sample space is six. So you just count how many elements in the sample space. And next one, example three, a die, uh, a dice, I'm sorry. A dice is rolled uh, twice, oh, sorry. 
A dice is rolled once. Find the probability of rolling. First one A is a three. So first I need to find the sample space. S could be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the number of S is six. A uh, three. If you roll the dice and you get the result of three, uh, so the E of three, roll a three, which one, uh, which means the N of this is one because you just, you just can roll once and uh, you can get only one result, which is three. I can get only uh, the number of the outcome outcomes in event E is one. So we get one over six, oh, which is here, one over six. Uh, the next one, number B, an even number. So uh, the sample space should keep the same. I already listed them, six numbers there. So an even number, the even number could be two, four, or six. So the event of even number, the number of this outcome could be th uh, three because the set of E is two, four, six. So, uh, the number of outcomes in event E is three. So three divided by six is one over two, that's half. Number D, a number less than 10. So the E is the number of outcomes. Could be one, two, three, four. These are comma, uh, five six. The, these numbers are all less than 10 and they are equal to the sample space, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the, the probability of E, I mean for number D, oh, I make a mess here, I need more space here. Okay, let's work on number D and later we talk about number C. Okay, so is a number less than 10, which is six, it's because we have six element in the event E and then also have six numbers in the sample space. So we got E. Uh, let's work on number C. I'm sorry, I make mess here. A number less than five, a number less than five. So the E could be one, two, three, four. And the sample space is still one, two, three, four, five, six. So the P E equals the cardinal number of the E, which is four over six equals two over uh, three. This is number C. And then the last one is number E, a number greater than six. So can you find the event that you roll, uh, you roll a dice and get a number greater than six? Uh, I can't make it because the largest number is six. No number can greater than six on a dice. So mm, I should say uh, five. The uh, cardinal number of E is zero because it's an empty set. So if zero, the PE, the probability of E is zero over six, which is zero. So this is a way to find the answer of example three.
it's a little bit messy here. So you can read my notes here or watch the video uh, and pause the video. Okay, let's move on. Okay. The, uh, these are three very important sentences. The first one is if an event, event is certain to occur, its probability is one. Uh, for example, I think we have an example here because we got the, uh, we got the result of possibility equals one here. That is rolling a number less than 10. Uh, if you roll a dice and you got a, a result less than 10, that's uh, certainly because all the number on the dice uh, are less than 10. So you always can get, uh, uh, you can make sure the dice can roll a number less than 10. So the probability for a event certain to occur the probability is one. Uh, second sentence, if an event can't occur, its probability is zero, uh, just like we talk about on number E. Uh, if you're rolling a number greater than six, so no number can greater than on the dice. So the event, uh, the probability of this event is zero. The last sentence, the sum of probabilities of all possible outcomes in an experiment is one. Let's move on to number four, example number four. A fair coin is tossed two times in session. The set of equal, equally likely outcomes is this. So that means the question already gave you the sample space. This is a sample space. Uh, HH means first time is had, second time is had. H ha H ta HT means first is had, second is tail. TH, tail, had. TT, tail, tail. So these are all the possibility would happen um, when you toss a tail. Uh, toss a coin, toss a coin two times and find the probability of getting exactly one head. If uh, in the E event part, only get a one uh, head, that is HT or TH. Otherwise you have two head and no head. So the number of E is two. Mm -hmm. And then the number of the sample space is four. So two over four PE equals two over four, which is one half. The example five. A fair coin is tossed three times in session. The set of equal like, equally likely outcomes is in following. So they already provide you the sample space. Uh, the question is asking, find the probability of getting a tail on third to uh, toss. The third toss, so first, second, third, first, second, third. So the third should be a tail. The last one is, mm, let me choose this, okay. Last one is the third, uh, the third toss is a tail. And the third toss is tail, the third toss is tail, third toss is a tail. So we find the four. That means the number of the possible event could be four. And uh, the number of sample space is one, two, three, four, eight, eight. So the PE 
is four over eight is one half. Okay, let's move on to next example. You select a family with four children. Uh, if four, uh, if M represents a male child, M is a male child and F is a female child. The set of equal equally likely outcomes for the children's gender is, oh, they provide you the sample space. Totally the sample space, number of the sample space is 16. Find the, the question is find the probability of selecting a family with exactly four male children. Four male children means the first one male, second one male, third one male, and last one is male. So you can only find it here. So the number of this event equals one because only one in the set E. So the PE equals uh, one over 16. Let's move on to next part. Oh, this is very important. Remember uh, this 42, uh, 42 card deck. Uh, these are 42 cards and uh, Mm. 13 uh, hearts and uh, 13 clubs, 13 diamonds, 13 spades. And also you have four jacks and four queens and four kings. Uh, when you memorize all of these, it's very helpful when you solve the problems. Okay, let's see what's the question asking us. You are dealt one card from standard for a 52 card deck. Find the probability of being dealt. The first one is being dealt a king from 52. So 52 cards are different. So, the N of S, which means the uh, all the possible uh, events, uh, oh, sorry, all the possible outcomes, which is 52. So when you doubt, uh, when you were doubt a card from 52, you have 52 pos uh, possible outcomes. And if you are dealt a king, so the E is a king. What's the meaning of a king? That means a king could be a hard king, heart of king, a club of king, a diamond of king, a spade of king. So you have four uh, possibility, uh, you have four outcomes. So, Actually, I better to uh, said the hard king, the hard king, or the uh, just said draw something, a heart king and the club king and diamond king and the space king here. I just uh, use circle to represent my words. So the e, the number of e, is four. So the uh, possibility of the event E equals four over 52, which is one over 13. The number B, a heart. So a heart, how many hearts? We have 13 hearts. So the E, I don't need to list all of these 13, but I know the number of E is 13. The number of S is 52. So the PE for number B, question number B is 13 over 52 is one fourth. And next one, C, the king of hearts. Uh, so the king of hearts, we have only one, the king of hearts. So the number of E equals one. 
the E can be listed like King of Hearts. Hmm. Oh, okay. So the probability of the E equals the number of E, which is one, over the uh, cardinal uh, of the sample space, which is 52. Okay, that's about this question. You can read the details uh, on my D, uh, PDF. Okay, let's move on to the next part the compute the empirical probability. The theoretical probability is based on the set of equal, equally likely outcomes and the numbers of elements in the set. By contrast, contrast the empirical, empirical probability applies to situations in which we observed how frequently an event occurs. We use the following formula to compute the uh, empirical probability of an event. So this one, this probability based on the observation. Oh. Here is the uh, formula uh, of the empirical probability of event E equals the equals observed number of time, times E occurs divided by total number of observed occurrences. So we use examples to uh, see the example eight. So, okay. In 2015, there were approximately 252 million Americans ages 15 or older. Uh, in this table, it, uh, it shows the distribution by merit marital statues and the gender of this pop, uh, population. Numbers in the table are expressed in millions. So the question here, if one person is randomly selected from the population described in table, find the probability to the nearest hundreds that the person A is divorced. So what should we do? We must find the we must find the observed number of times E occurs. So what's the number of A? Uh, the question A, divorced occur. We need to find it from the form. Okay. So divorced, divorced. What's the total number of divorced? That is. To, uh, 26. So PE, we find the top part, H is 26. And the bottom part, total number of, of observed occurrence, what's the total number? We find this from the question. Uh, is 254, or you can find it on the table, 254. 254. You simplify this, or you use your calculator to find uh, the decimals. And number B is female. So let's find, uh, what should be the observed number of the times E occurs, a female occur? Find the female. What's the total number of female? It's 131. It's 131 over the total number is two. 54 is here. So we solve the problem, find the probability of the question, and you simplify it uh, and uh, keep the nearest handbers. Uh, and then you get to the result here and here. So compare your uh, result with the, in, uh, with the this PDF for, format form file, I'm sorry. Okay, next one, let's move on. A single dice, uh, a single dice is rolled twice. 36 equally likely outcomes are shown to the right. Find the probability getting to numbers whose sum is two. So what's the meaning of this question? 
I always have dice. D I C E. Okay. All right. Uh, let me explain the explain the uh, this picture. You see here the you have to roll twice uh, the dice. The first time you could roll a one or a two or three or four or five or six. So the least of four, uh, six uh, events or outcomes here. And the second row, you could roll a one or two or three or four or five or six. This is your second row. This one, here shows you if you roll a one first and then one second. So this is the first time you roll the number. And this one is second time you roll a number. For example, here, uh, the first time I roll a three and the second time I roll a four. Uh, so uh, right now, maybe you understand the meaning of all of these uh, gr uh, the graphs here. So the question is asking you find the probability of getting two numbers whose sum is two. We need to identify what is our E and what is our sample space. So the E is whose sum is two. So two numbers sum is two. We only have one outcomes here. So the number of this E equals one because we have only one outcome. And what's the sample space? Mm. Okay. What's the sample space number? Which is 36, because we have uh, 36 equally likely outcomes. Uh, so it's shown in the picture. So. First one is one, and the sample space card, cardinal number is 36. So you use one over 36, one over 36. That's the uh, first question. Second one, find the probability of getting two, event, uh, two even numbers, two even numbers. So first should be even. Could be four, two, could be, um, could be two, could be four, could be six. And the second number must also be uh, even. So two, four, or six. So I, I can find them here. Could be two, two, could be two, four, could be two, six. And first must be uh, even. So Four two, four four, four six. So six two, six four, six. How many of them? So nine. The second one, the e. N of e equals nine, and sample space keep the same thirty six. So the p e for the second question is e over thirty six, which is one over four. Okay, next question, the last one. Uh, last one is not uh, very close to the materials we are learning, but you have this kind of question in your assignment. So let's read it. How many different arrangement? That's about permutation or the uh, fundamental counting principles. How many different arrangements of three letters can be formed if the first letter must be W or K? Repeats, uh, repeats of letters are allowed. It. The meaning of that is three letters. And then first one of three letters, you must choose letters from A, B, C, D to um, y, Z, Z. So, uh, I'm not sure why I write a three here. Okay. 
three uh, three letters. The first one must be W or K. I have only two choice. And then second one, I can choose them from 36 letters. So alphabet. So I have uh, 26. Did I say 36? I'm too tired. Okay, two, 26 choice. And then the last one, you also have 26 choice because it says repeats of letters are allotted. So how many ways, uh, how many arrangement of this, which is two times 26, times 26. Um, let's use my calculator to find the result. Two times 26 times 26 is one, three, 50. Two. So this is the result of ex example 10. Uh, I think that's the last question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you have any question, let me know uh, via email or uh, you ask me during the tutoring session. Okay. Have a good day.